Hey, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to you, your weekly weather report for the week of June 16th, 2022. I know I'm a day late. My husband and I were traveling for our wedding anniversary. Spent some time in the West Coast away from the desert heat with the major heat advisories that we're having here. So much weird weather going on right now. And if you haven't heard me say this, you'll hear it now. I always feel like I'm living in the Hunger Games where there's game masters who are in charge of the weather. So take that for what it's worth, but that sure is how it feels sometimes. So anyway, we enjoyed being out of the heat and played and it was just such a, such a relaxing, playful, enjoyable time to be together, to appreciate each other. And to just live life. I think that that's the thing right now that keeps coming up in these weather reports is it's just time to be living life, making memories, making memories with the people that you love, making memories with, you know, having new things, new experiences for yourself, for your, for your families and so on. And I think I mentioned last week, I'm starting to take French lessons again so that's something that I've always wanted to master and just haven't, haven't quite frankly prioritized it. So this summer, prioritizing French lessons as well. So what are you prioritizing this summer for yourself? What are you learning new? How are you using this time of quietude and uh, pe relative peacefulness between now and probably, I'm going to guess like August, we're going to have some relative peace anyway in the world. So then we have the election cycle coming up starting in August in the U S and you know, that's always a shit show regardless of what side of the aisle you vote or if you vote at all. Um, it also, it always brings up some drama and some conflict and is pretty divisive. So up until that point, let's just enjoy this time. Let's make the most of it, make some memories this summer. And so I pulled some cards from the work your light Oracle deck, this one, Rebecca Campbell. I love her decks, just love them. And I thought these were very interesting as I tuned into our collective energies here in the actualization zone. Um, the first one that I pulled this week is to trust the niggle, trust the niggle. And a niggle, if you've never heard of that word before, it's kind of the in where I come from, we call it the burr under your saddle or the bee in your bonnet. But it's a thing that's kind of right underneath the surface, the surface that's been bothering you or that's been trying to get your attention, but in a very kind of quiet, subtle way. Trust the niggle. In other words, you've heard me say this, stop gaslighting yourself. If, you, if something's going sideways internally or if you're getting picking up on something that's not quite right, in your world, pay attention to that. Trust the nickel. Do some exploration around that. What's the root cause of the nickel? How can I shift out of this? So it could be anything from, oh, here's a great example. I had a nickel a couple weeks ago with Cooper, my golden doodle. He goes to daycare almost every day. He loves going to daycare to play with the friends Dozer and, and Trooper. And there's another Cooper that he plays with. But he came home one day and as I was exchanging, as I was getting him from the, the daycare worker, she said to me, she said, he doesn't like dominant dogs. And I was like, hmm. I didn't say anything. We we're just, a, it was a quick exchange, but that stuck with me. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what it meant. But um, so the next time I just, I went in, I just asked one of the other workers, I said, somebody said this the other day, what does that mean? And he, <laughs> you're welcome for what I'm about to tell you. But um, I asked this, I asked the other worker, I said, what does this mean? And he said, well, Cooper doesn't like to be humped. I'm like, oh, okay. I get that. I wouldn't like that either. Totally agree with it. But it was one of those things that I needed to have more information about that I couldn't let go. That would be an example of a niggly. And I'm really sorry. I just talked about my dog, dog and dominance, but welcome to my world. This is my world. Trust the nigglies. That's the first thing. So what's the niggly? What's the thing that's been right under your skin that's been bugging you, that's been kind of 
not sitting well with you. Go into that. Look more deeply into it. Don't take it at its face value. Please don't take it at its face value. There's always something deeper. It could be something small like that. It could be something major. But at any rate, that is your spidey sense. That is your intuition. Your, your, the voice of your soul that's trying to talk to you. We live in a culture, particularly in our community, where we've got this, these powerful intellects able to figure things out quickly, make sense of things, know what to do about them. And often the intellect overrides the intuition. You've heard me say this too, that it's time to bring intuition back into its rightful place as a sacred gift. That means letting go of the criticism, letting go of the, the, the uh, sarcasm, the skepticism that you might be having about your intuition and just really listening into it. Listen into it. Feel into it. Be in curiosity about it. So that's the first one. Trust the niggle. The second one, this one has come through. No, this, this is the next one. This is the Akasha. This is the card for the Akasha. So what's the Akasha? Well, the Akasha is the infinite field of potentiality. It's where truth lies. It's where love, light lies. I always, I think about the Akasha as the heart of God, the heart of the consciousness of God. Truth, love, light is right there. And it, it exists in the same brain state as a deep meditative state. So delta brain state is where the Akasha exists in you. So it's largely unconscious, but um, it's also where your divine guidance comes from. So when I work with clients privately, I'm often working in the Akashic records, in the Akashic field, the field of potentiality, the field of truth, the field of wisdom. And what this card is reminding you and encouraging you about is that you are being divinely guided too. The Akasha isn't just for a few people because you're alive, because you're a divine and eternal being of love and light, you have access to that field as well. Sometimes we need to learn how to get there, how to shift our consciousness in order to get there. But that is the field that is constantly communicating with you, constantly advising you, guiding you in a very gentle, polite, joyful way. So that again is, it goes back into being the voice of your soul, doesn't it? So the nigglies rise up from the voice of your soul. The nigglies rise up from the Akasha sometimes. And then if you're not careful, or if you just get into the old habit of overriding your intuition, with your intellect, that's when things can go sideways in your life. And that's when you start recreating that gerbil wheel that everybody says that they want to get off of. The only real way to get off the gerbil wheel in your life is to start paying attention to your intuition. Remember that you're divinely guided. Remember that you're not out here on your own by yourself, alone, having to do everything by yourself. That's what the world, that's what the Hunger Games would want us to think that we're isolated alone. But the heart of God and the truth of it is that we are divinely guided. And it's up to each of us to shift out of the intellect and move into the space of guidance from the heart, guidance from the soul, guidance from our divine helpers, our angels. I want to tell you a story about that. So I love angels. I always have. I learned my guardian angel prayer when I was under three years old. And I really think that that was a big activation for me when I came online as a conscious being. And my mom taught me that prayer. But anyway, I've always loved angels. And my husband and I went to the Los Angeles, I think it's the Los Angeles Angels baseball game this weekend. And they have every, and remember that movie from the eighties, Angels in the Outfield, one of my favorite baseball movies, favorite movies of all time anyway. But anyway, they had um, 
everywhere, angels and halos. And I just, I feel like I'm in heaven when I'm there, to be honest. So I bought a, an angel's baseball cap with, with the A with the halo around the top of the A. And during the game, this man from New York City sang the Star Spangled Banner and the uh, God Bless America in the seventh inning. He was a 9-11 survivor. He was a police officer during the 9-11 attacks. And for those of you who have been in my sphere for a while, you'll know that my husband experienced 9-11 firsthand. He was there and lost his brother, a fireman, a New York, New York City fireman during the, the attacks. So there's, a, there's always a special connection between my husband and now with me and New York City and anyone who's been in that experience. There's just a, there's just a bond that we share. So we witnessed this man singing the Star Spangled Banner operatically. He's amazing. Um, and then singing the God Bless America and didn't think anything of it. Well, we are leaving in the eighth inning because the Angels, unfortunately, were losing. And um, I saw over to uh, to the left of us these big marquees where you know they have the angel wings painted on the on the marquees where you can stand in front and you look like you have angel wings well i love those i will i've got pictures of me with taco wings and with angel wings and all kinds of things just because i love that so much so i was very insistent i said we have to i have to go get a picture and my husband wanted to get out before the traffic started i said no we have to go over to the angel wings i have to get a picture Finally, he agrees. We walk over there and who's standing there but this man who sang the Star Spangled Banner and the, and the God Bless America. They had a beautiful connection for just a couple minutes. They exchanged phone numbers. And I just I think that that's such an important angelic moment, an important moment of synchronicity and serendipity in our lives. And that's what I was just following my my love of angels. But it became so much more than that as we had this moment with this, with this person who had a shared experience with my husband. And from my perspective, because I work a lot with um, people who have crossed over people, a lot of times, especially in my private sessions, I'll have uh, deceased ancestors, deceased family members come through and we'll share that information with the, the client as it comes through. And I didn't do that during the, at the baseball game because it just wasn't the right time to do that. But I could just feel all the deceased I could feel my husband's brother, John, coming through, and I could feel the ones that this man had lost as well coming through. So it was a really powerful, energetic meeting of, of humans and then our non-human, our non-physical counterparts, our non-physical family members and those who have crossed over before us. It was very powerful. And that's what can happen when you just trust divine guidance. I wasn't planning on seeing this guy. I didn't even think about it. But the universe orchestrated that so that we could have that beautiful experience. And maybe even perhaps so that I could share that with you today. Remember that you are divinely guided too. All right. Next one this week. We've had this one before in this group. This is the warrior woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? Have you answered your deepest calling? If you're here with me in the actualization zone, chances are that you're leaning into your deepest calling. But it could also be that you're sort of still wandering around in the desert lost about what your deepest calling is. And if that's the case, that's one of the reasons why I'm starting the Academy of Actualization. That's one of the reasons why I do all of this work is because finding your true north, finding your deepest calling, your life purpose, is your purpose. And I know how to do that. That's one of my great gifts is being able to help people identify and lean into their purpose, their deepest calling, and then to hold the space for them to live into that as well. So if that's something that you're wanting some support on, I would encourage you to reach out, ask about the Academy of Actualization that's opening next week, ask about how, how we can work together to kind of work through the nigglies around your life purpose. And we will get you headed in the right direction. Remember, you're not meant to walk this leg of your journey by yourself. Just not. Last one. And this one goes right along with, are you answering your deepest calling? I love how these cards work together. This one is the crumbling. The crumbling. 
And the, the question that is being asked on this card is, what are you clinging on to? What are you clinging on to? We're at a time where there are so many things that are shifting in our world. We have the solstice, the summer solstice in the Northern hemisphere coming up next week. It's my favorite day of the year, the longest day. I always think about the solstices as portals, as opportunities to lean into something new, to step through into something new. The fastest, most expedient way to step through into something new is to let go of what you've been clinging to. I don't, it's probably been six months or so ago. I saw a meme and I don't know who said it, but I'll always remember this. He said, anything that I've let go of in my life has claw marks on it. Anything I've let go of in my life has claw marks on it. That's that clinging, that scratching, that holding on, hold on as tight as I can. And the encouragement here today is to look at what am I clinging to? What am I holding on to? And then you can just let it go. You can just let it go. I think one of the scariest things, especially for intelligent people who also are either closeted intuitives or are just coming into understanding and awareness of their intuition, is letting go of the old ways of doing things, letting go of the thinking ways of doing things, letting go of the logical, scientific ways of doing things and allowing yourself to live from your deepest experience your lived experiences, allowing yourself to trust your inner wisdom rather than looking for somebody outside of you to tell you what to do, including me, including me. So as we're approaching the summer solstice, the winter solstice, obviously in the Southern hemisphere, now is a very, very good time to take a look at what am I clinging to? Am I clinging to an old way of doing my work? Am I clinging to old programs that no longer serve me, that are no longer serving my clients, that are actually dragging me down and not allowing me to expand in the way that I'm meant to, not allowing me to master the things that I've come to master? I had a thought last night. My guides were talking to me as I was preparing for this session today, and one of the things that they said was, well, they reminded me that positive psychology has been a bridge for me for a long, long time to be able to talk with intelligent, closeted, intuitive people about the things that I know make a difference in their lives, like gratitude, like hope, even like things like intuition and spiritual intelligence. We get at it from the data. We get at it at the science first. I have always led with science because for the people who I have worked with for years, that's what they've been taught to trust first. So we satisfy the intellect with really solid data from the field of positive psychology in order to get them in a position where they can start looking inward and almost give themselves permission to explore themselves, to explore their emotions, to explore their intuition to learn about things that they wouldn't otherwise have learned about because of how they were trained in the sciences. I was trained that way too. I was a biology major. I was trained by atheists. So I needed that myself, but my guides reminded me of this last night. They said, Robin, that bridge has only gotten you so far. It can get you no further. You have to start teaching something different. That's why I've started talking just very openly about intuition, about the intuitive guidance, about the non-physical energies that we have coursing through our, our bodies, coursing all around us, that we can access, that influence us. Because what I have found, especially over the past couple of years, is that science is often, not always, but often detrimental to our lived experience. We place science, we place data, we place research in front of our lived experience, and we refer out to that. We say, what does the science say, rather than what does my soul say? So I'm no longer willing to outsource my inner knowing to science or to another human being even. 
but instead to share my lived experiences with all of you. I think this is the greatest gift that I can give that I know to give is to just say positive psychology for the people who have worked with me for years. That's gotten us as far as it can get us. Thank you, positive psychology. And now it's time to turn our attention and to deepen our attention to our inner knowing, our inner wisdom, to the intuition, to the guides, to the angels, to the non-physical benevolent beings who surround us, protect us, guide us, lead us, encourage us. That's the place. That's where we're headed next. And that's why these weather reports are so important for our community. I believe that in each of us, we have these inner gifts that are ready to emerge, but they cannot emerge if we are still being led around by the ring in our nose by our intellect. So let's put our intellect in its rightful place as the servant, not as a dictator, not as the one that's trying to logic your way out of everything, but your heart's wisdom the heart's wisdom is the, is the place where you will flourish today, tomorrow, and on into the future if you choose. All right. That is my weather report for today. We were all over the map, weren't we? Angels baseball games, puppy daycare. And through it, through it all, we follow intuition. We follow intuition. I like to say we follow our hearts, but I don't mean we're following our emotions. I mean that if you could imagine that your heart has eyes, if you could imagine your deepest wisdom sits in your heart, this is where we drop into. I've said for a long time, we build the bridge between the head and the heart. Now it's time to just create a portal and just go there. No more time for bridge building. Now we just need to get there. So welcome to your heart today. Put your hand on your heart. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Let it go. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, heart. And thank you. Hey, if you're not a member of my mailing list yet, I want you to get on it because there's all kinds of information that we're sending out, inspiration, opportunities to connect, opportunities to work with me, both in the Actualization Academy and privately. Um, and it just is, it's to me, it's the most intimate way of connecting with people like you is through email. It's our oldest form of electronic communication and I still love it. So the way to get on my email list is go over to my website, drrobinmckay.com, D-R-R-O-B-Y-N-M-C-K-A-Y.com. And just hover there for a second. There's a quiz that comes up and this, it's a leadership styles quiz. So not only are, what can you get on my my mailing list, but you'll be able to learn something about yourself in terms of your own leadership style. So I'm always very excited to share that with all of you. I think the more that we know about ourselves, the more we understand ourselves as intuitive leaders, as visionary leaders, as quiet leaders, and so on. The more we understand how we lead, the easier it is to do so. So head on over to my website, check that out and get on my mailing list so that we can stay connected. All right, until next week. Have a great one.